All right, I'd like to welcome to the process of hip hop all the way from Gary, Indiana, my man ML Underwood. What's going on, player? What's happening, boss player? What's going on, my bro? Hey, man, everything's everything. So glad you was able to join the show. We talked a little Thanks bit. Before, yeah, we talked a little bit before the interview, man. And, um, you know, you have been in the game for a long time and you're involved in a lot of stuff. So this going to be a ro- this going to be a very robust interview. But I but I but I did want to start with how you got your start. You know, that defining moment, man, where you transitioned from being a consumer of hip hop to an actual MC. Talk to me about that, man. Well, my um, my start is very interesting, man. I um, you know, of course, when I was younger, you know, 14, you know how hip hop was. He was he was break dancing and beatboxing. I was a beatboxer back in the day, and I was one of the best too. And uh, you know, of course, you know the beats, the machines came in and replaced the beatboxers. So I kind of got discouraged, man. I yeah. really did. I was discouraged, and I um, I took the back seat, you know, and I stayed around hip hop, and you know, and I got to the point, you know, as I got older. Well, I just only was this exec- executive producing uh, other artists because um, I felt as though I didn't have a place because I wasn't a rapper at the time. And I just executive produced a lot of artists in our area, man, put money behind them, um, studio time. I, you know, artists like Tension. I work with uh, uh, Yosan Sal- uh, Tyler. There's a few artists out there, man, from Gary that I work with. Um, of course, you know, uh, Freddie Gibbs. They want to know Freddie Gibbs. Yeah. He, uh, he's out here doing great things, man. And, um, you know, and it's, a many, it's many others, man. And, you know, it's just at the point right now where the Internet is really blowing up. So I felt this is the opportunity now to really put my put, my, put the money behind myself. Because uh, I've always, you know, I've been in the feds. I, I did five years in the federal penitentiary. And, and a lot of my friends when I was in the feds told me that I had the impact. And they told me I need to put that money behind myself. And that's what I did when I got out. Do you feel that that it... That when you that that point was a defining moment for you as in your career, man. Do 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 you count that that moment when you really as an MC started to take off and not just be a producer? Well, yeah, I did. I, I looked at you know I've always when I was in school I was always on stage. I was always doing uh, uh, entertaining. You know, I, I, it was always in me to do that. I was on um, the Easter talent shows. Um, you know, we were winning them too. We, you know, we were doing well. My, my group, uh, Two Deaf Boys, I was a group called The Boys from Gary. Uh, there was a lot of other uh, groups in Gary. Uh, Lover Boys, I was doing great. Uh, and, you know, I always had it, but I just, you know, I, you know, of course, a lot of times you talk talking to people, they always say, okay, let, let the young people have it kind of thing. And it's like, okay, I kind of fell into that trap of, you know, uh, you know, I'm just going to just invest in the younger artists. And, 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 you know, and then I look around and you see, I see artists older than me doing well in the music industry. And um, and I just said, you know what? You know, after, you know, meeting some of my friends that I met when I was in the federal penitentiary, man, doing that time, man, and they, you know, I'm, I'm around there talking and rapping and, and I'm being me and, and they were just being honest with me. You know, there's a lot of brainiacs and brilliant individuals in there, man. They just told me, man, if you get out and do this yourself, bro, you're going to really take off. They, they all told me I was a game spitter. Everybody told me, they said, man, you got so much game, man, and you... When you talk, you really force people to listen to what you're saying, and what you're saying really makes a difference, and it, and it can reach, really reach hearts. So, and I took it to heart, and and that's what I did. If you listen to all my music, man, I'm dropping jewels. I'm giving you in relationships. I got a song called Crazy Love that talks about relationships. I have a song with um, Johnny Blaze called Show Me. That's about love and relationships. I got some gangster stuff, too. That's on my life, you know, which I'm telling you about my life and what I've been through. Um, and about every, I'm talking about everything from... Um, from me being in wrestling out of high school all the way up to, to now, you know. And, um, and, of course, my last joint, I'm the light. I really enjoy doing that. I'm the light. Uh, I'm the light really, you know, during the time where we're living in right now where, you know, you see the pilot police is treating us as African Americans. And you can see as a people what we're going through. So I'm the light is something positive I put out there to let us all know. Everybody know. All of us know that we're the light out here. And, uh, and back off with that craziness. You know, because we're the light, you know, and remember that you are the light. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that, that song, I'm the light. I want to remind all of my brothers and sisters that we're the light. Don't be down around this time. I know, of course, we've been a little oppressed, but don't be down. We're still the light. And when I listen to your music, man, you cover a lot of different subject areas. A lot of artists kind of stick to one lane, but you you definitely have some social political messages in there. You have some very traditional messages about family, about love. I mean, so you cover a lot of different bases. The the light was interesting to me because, you know, I wanted to ask you, was that something you came up with as a result of what's going on right now? Or was that something already in the works? Well, 
Well, it's, I'll say both, both because, um, you know, I grew up, my dad, all, you know, when I, growing up, my dad always told me I was alike. He always told me that I was unique and I was different. And he, you know, my daddy, you know, you, you see what happened with Mike Tyson, how, you know, Castellano, I his name, was in his ear all the time and pushing it for great. And I had my dad in my corner like that. Um, so I was always to believe that I was alike. Um, and I was always leading in my group. All of my friends, I was always the leader. I always stood out. I took the lead and, um, you know, and so I use that, but at the same time, I, I want the world to know too, especially all of my brothers and sisters, we're the light. All of us are the light. <laughs> I'm not only the light, we're all the light. You just got to dig deep and find it and, and let that light shine in the world of darkness, you know? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, we had talked also a little bit, man, you're from Gary, Indiana. You know, birth, you know, Michael Jackson, obviously the Jacksons, that's 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 what really put Gary on the map. But, you know, in terms of hip hop, Gary, Indiana has had talent for a while. Yeah, but man. because because of its close proximity to some big mid Midwest towns, obviously Chicago, Detroit, it gets overlooked, man. Talk to me about being an MC in Gary, Indiana prior to the Internet. Man, OK, and, question, and then being one after the Internet. Man, let me tell you, bro. There, let me tell you, this is one, man, we have and have always had some of the greatest talents of the world. When I tell you, man, as far as even going back in the, you know, the, the breakdancing and beatbox days, man, we had the best beatboxes in the world, but we didn't have social media. We didn't have that. So, you know, I got this beatboxes right now. I can I can think of, man, you, you know, they, you know, they're at home right now. And a lot of them are still discouraged because they never got a chance to be heard. Those sounds and unique. Sounds yeah. that they was able to come out with that no the world has never heard, even myself. You know, you interview anybody know me in my city, they tell you I was the baddest beatbox they ever heard in their life. You know, but uh, and then of course you know you think about even the rap um, I'm seeing. I mean, I'm just proud. You know, some of us, a lot of times, but even in Gary, there's a lot of uh, groups in Gary that was about to get to that point, but then all of a sudden something happens, a lot of them go to prison, things of that nature. So we really didn't have that many rappers to come out of Gary and really, really make up. Big, big, big difference. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you can see now Freddie Gibbs is doing his thing. Shout out to him. Uh, you know, Yo Santala, you know, he's really grinding hard. There's a lot of artists in Gary that's really working hard. And, of course, I'm setting the lead. I'm, I'm, I'm leading a lot um, in my city because I'm really um, laying the groundwork and I'm, I'm laying the blueprint for the artists, that I, the new artists I'm going to bring behind me because I only got about four or five good years. I'm going to go hard myself and I'm going to get this blueprint and I'm going to put this, uh, this artist I get under the same blueprint. Uh, that I know that works because it works for me, you know. So thanks for social media. It really don't make a difference now where you're from because of social media, you know, we you just put out that good content, that uh, good work. Uh, you put out that good work, you know. Um, I just had a call come in. I had to ignore it. But you put out that good work, man, and uh, social media, and then people like to hear that music. They're going to keep streaming. They're going to keep streaming. They're going to keep streaming it. And that's, what, that's how we're going to win now areas like Gary, who's been overlooked in the past, which we can agree on that, but we can really win now. We just capitalize on the social media and, and putting that good work out there and letting the people choose. So you, you've you done music, man, but what would you say in the, you know, right now and in the future, and you kind of just, you, you mentioned this, but I want you to elaborate on this. Do you see yourself going more into production, executive production, because you have artists under you, you have artists that look up to you, you know, you're an icon, and Gary, do you feel like that's going to be your future direction? And less Exactly. Of, yeah, less yeah. I'm, 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 the, I'm, the, I'm the Diddy. I'm the Diddy in my area, the Master P, the uh, Birdman. I, I'm the one in my area. You know, I if I, of course, you know, if I was if I was in a, a city where the population was really, real big, like Atlanta or something like that, doing what I'm doing now, the Ben, the Ben, Ben out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm, my work is a little harder because I'm in a from the city, a population of 100,000, 80,000, probably less than that, you know. And I'm right now, I'm taking advantage of social media. So, and I know if I don't stop, you know, I'm gonna get exactly what's coming to me, which is, uh, which is, of course, greatness, man, and success. Uh, I just gotta keep going hard at it, you know. I can't just look at the fact that I'm from Gary and, you know, the pop, I can't just use that as excuse. I just gotta bust the scenes and think inside and out the box, you know, mm -hmm. wing. That's like my dad taught me. Right. And, and you and I are from that same era, man. Again, you know, just brings back memories, beatbox and breakdance and all that, man. 
And, you know, what would you say, man, is the biggest differences with the new artists that you work with, the millennials, so to speak? What would you say is the biggest difference, man, between the generation of the past and the artists that are coming out now that you're working with? Well, the artists now have um, a better opportunity because they have the social media. They got they have social media. You know, you got young guys jump out at 17, 18 years old, make one song, man, and get a few hundred million views or something. Yeah. You know, because it, it, you know you, you you got the game. You know, the youth, of mm -hmm. course, they're the biggest listeners. You know, so uh, they they had that advantage. Whereas back when I was, you know, doing it, you know. Only a couple hundred people seen your seen your performance or knew your talent because of where you were were from. We didn't have the social media, so we only had that few hundred people that was like, "Wow, man, it's, man, you better than man, you better than the human beatbox." I battled the human beatbox before too. Yeah, I battled, yeah, like, yeah. I was fourteen and destroyed them, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, fourteen. Me and, my, me and my guy Rock Box, we was at the Genesis Center, man. We got the beatbox, and he was like, "Whoa, yeah, <laughs> yeah." So well, I mean, that was just memories. It was a yeah. memory, and I got that in my book too about the experiences battling, you know, uh, you know. So, but once well, that, again, there's artists out here rapping that's way older than me. I'm in my 40s, but I ain't that old. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's no, definitely. You got again. I was just reflecting on that a couple of weeks back, man. You know, you, you, your Titans, Cool Herc. I think that you're probably in the early 60s right now at this point. So you got, you know, hip hop is definitely at a mature, mature, mature. Yeah level it is no longer a kid genre or a youngins genre uh you know definitely it, it go it spans for for a lot of age ranges uh what would be your advice man to a young artist that is coming up now my advice right now to take advantage of social media uh my advice also too you stick with a sound that you know that that fits you uh, like what I did, you know, I um, I got, you know, I got MCV, you know, MCV, he's my producer, you know, like I was telling you earlier, you know, he produced Megan Thee Stallion's first two albums, Make It Hot and, and Tina Snow, you know, and he's from Gary, Indiana. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's yes, from indeed. Gary, and he, mm -hmm. he's one of the hottest producers in America, but, you know, you ain't really, you don't hear it, you know, and you don't even hear her even mention his name, but he he the one that, you know, pretty much put on the, put on the map. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's that's another thing I'm doing too. I'm making sure our voices are heard from the G. You know what I'm saying? We just we, we can go anywhere and make it. We can go anywhere and and do great things. And I, you know, right now I'm just building the resources to try to create that avenue so all of our great talent can have that platform to really be heard. That's what all I'm trying to do. Absolutely, man. Hey, well, I appreciate it, man. You spending some knowledge, spending some time on the show, man. When you when you drop your next joint, man, definitely want you to come back on the show, man. And, and yeah. shout for show, because I know that's coming, man. So yes, it is. I got it's called I got more work to do. It ain't over with. I've done a lot, but I got more work to do. Okay. So I, I know your social media information, man, but what's the best place for people to stay in contact with you? Stay on top of what you're doing. Well, you can um, you can uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, My Life Entertainment. Um, of course, you, you know the logo here. You see the logo, you know to click that. You can follow me. I'm on Facebook as ML Underwood. Um, also, I have um, uh, United Prisoner Association. You can also see the work I'm doing on prison reform. Uh, I'm trying to get a lot of lifers out of prison, nonviolent cr criminals, by raising awareness, you know, and helping, you know, try to get these laws changed so they can come out. Because that's how you really get get them out. You gotta just go get those convince those lobbyists to change those laws. They get to adjust it so they can be released early. So you can you can contact me at www.unitedprisonerassociation.com or also My Life Entertainment, www.mylifeentertainment.net. That's my website. Uh, yeah, those are the ways. They, or on Twitter, you can contact me on Twitter. Yes, indeed. William L. Underwood, man, I appreciate you again. Best of luck to you in the future, bro. And we'll be talking real soon, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Thanks for having me.